All right, everybody, how's it going? It is Monday, January 22nd, 2024. And of course, we just finished with the uh, divisional round NFL playoffs. You know, we just finished with the AF, uh, AFC divisional round, NFC division round. Sorry, that's like a weird thing to say. I don't know why. Um, so it's only natural. It's only right. It's only next steps. Playoffs move on. Season moves on. We're sadly getting, we only got three games left in the uh, NFL season when you look at it because we're at the conference championship round. We have the AFC conference. We have the NFC conference. Uh, championship games to go through so of course we have pickums we have all that to get to in a moment um just kind of like last week we wound up going i believe what was it uh oh yeah we got we went four and so we got all the games right last week we picked the uh we we picked the ravens we picked the chiefs we picked the lions and of course we picked the uh 49ers so that was good we ended up looking really good um so that's cool uh i think that's like one of the first times i've ever been perfect in a playoff round but that's pretty sweet so uh, yeah, we have all those games to go over in just a moment. Make sure you guys, uh, if you can, just to help the video out, if it's not a big deal, if you could leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and if you could, um, the more important thing than the other two things uh, is leave your comments with your picks, how you did last week, how you're doing in the playoffs, how you did the season, what you think of my picks. Um, you know, there's only two two to do, so it's not going to be super hard to leave your picks down below. Um, leave your reasonings, whatever you want to leave in the comments. I like to read those. I, I respond to almost every single one that I can, unless I kind of just miss it somehow. Um, so, if you can, cool. If not, that's totally fine too. Um, just uh, that's all the YouTube stuff. We get that out of the way and we move on. Uh, it's just this is just our pick 'em record over the year. I don't add in the playoff stuff to the end. Um, overall, in the playoffs, we are eight and two though. We went four and two. We went four and zero. Oh. Um, so technically, we would be what uh, one sixty or one what is that one eighty one seventy five three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. 175 and uh, 107. So, hey, our record's improving dramatically thanks to the playoffs. We've only gotten two games wrong, but who really cares? All right, playoffs and yeah, this is all that's left. We've got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. So, obviously, it'll be the Chiefs versus the Ravens. That game will be on, uh, at both games are Sunday. This is the early game, the AFC. And then the later game is the NFC. And then in the NFC, we've only got two teams remaining the shock team of the Detroit Lions and, of course, the San Francisco Giants or 49ers. Sorry, wrong team, wrong sport. Um, yeah, the Lions are kind of the shock team left. It's like, holy crap, the Detroit Lions are one upset away from actually getting to the Super Bowl. Um, and then, of course, the other teams are all kind of expected to be here. I think in my preseason predictions, I had it as the Bengals versus the Chiefs in the AFC uh, for like to go to the Super Bowl. I'd have to look, but I'm pretty sure that's what I had. I switched my pick over to the Ravens in about week eight due to the fact that the... Um, I just felt that uh, with all the injuries and everything happening to the Bengals, they just weren't going to be able to make it, and the Ravens were. So I was like, all right, I'll just swap teams in the conference and change my Super Bowl pick from the Bengals versus the 49ers to the Ravens versus the 49ers, like a lot of people did. But um, So yeah, that's kind of I kind of figured this would be the matchup. Um, not really maybe the Bengals instead of the Ravens, but hey. Um, and then I figured it would be the Niners of some sort, but I thought they would be playing somebody else, like the Eagles. Um, I didn't expect them to collapse the way that they did at the start of the year. Um, again, these are predictions made right before the season begins. Um, I had the Lions actually losing to the four. This is kind of a weird matchup because in my predictions, I had the Lions playing the 49ers um, in the NFC champion or in the divisional round. So in the last round of the playoffs and the Lions lose that game. But now I'm looking at it like, well, now that I've seen the season, who knows how this game could go. But now it's in the actual conference championship. That's pretty cool. So I kind of felt pretty good. I did pretty decent um, job with the playoffs. Uh, you know, I'm technically really close to getting the game right because I think I had the... I wanted to I have the Ravens winning it all um, this year, but that's just my prediction. Uh, but things change, I guess you could say. Let's uh, Sunday football, right? Game one. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. It is the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. The Ravens are three and a half point favorites with an over under of 44 and a half. So the Ravens walk in as about four point favorites uh, per fan duel and all that. That's the site I usually use to find lines. Um, Ravens won their game in dominating fashion, 34 to 10. It was a very close game up until about halftime. Um, and then after the half, the Ravens came out and just fucking started beating the hell right out of the Texans. It was a brutal game. Uh, very good game until half, and then it wasn't. Uh, and so the Ravens advanced. They did it in the only game that was like big, big style and everything like that. They looked, they were the team that looked the best out of the, uh, what was it, one, two, three, out of all the games. So 
out of the out of the six teams or out of the four teams out of the four games they look the best there we go that's how i say that uh <laughs> so and then we look at the chiefs uh ch -ch -ch -ch. they won their game but it was kind of an ugly game uh, but again it, it wasn't ugly by either team it was a really well played game um this the, what really kind of could have made this a lot worse and the score could have been a lot worse than what it was was the bills went for a fake punt in this game uh at like their own 30 they snap it to demar hamlin he gets stopped and the chiefs take over get it down to like the one or two yard line and then i think it was miko hardman gets the ball and it gets punched out and goes out of the end zone as a touchback so technically this game really could have ended something like 34 to 24 so this could have been a lot worse of a game so the score is kind of sneakily like yeah the bills made the play but it's also like uh that's kind of a that's very lucky that that happened but it also kind of highlights how the bills when you turn the ball over on the like when the bills turn it over it never really hurts them it's like the weirdest thing i've ever seen but ultimately the bills came up short in their final drive and the chiefs take the game uh they get their first road win with patrick mahomes and company pretty cool um they looked very good on the road as well so that was something also um mvs played well kelsey looked like he stepped finally back into his groove a little bit um with the two touchdowns so you can tell I watched the Chiefs game more than the Ravens game. Um, but, you know, it, it is, what, is, what, is, what do you say about the Ravens game? They completely killed the Texans in the second half. Um, but, all right, so looking at this game, right, you have one of the best defenses going against the other one of the best defenses. The Chiefs have a top defense. Ravens have a top defense, so it's kind of like a weird wash. Offensively, I kind of I like the Ravens a lot more than I like the Chiefs this year. They've been far more consistent with it. They've been they have better receivers. I think they have a slightly better run game. Um, the offensive line situation for the Ravens is better right now because we don't really know what's going on with Joe Thune. Um When it's like a lineman having a pectoral or a chest issue, which I think he's got, um, it's like, oh, that's not good. He's probably going to miss a game or so. Uh, so this, I mean, it's kind of like 50-50 with him. Um, so again, you kind of look at the Ravens, you give them the, the plug on offense here. Again, consistency all season. This is something they've been doing. They've done all year. They've kind of been a good offense all season with the Chiefs. Again, they they have Mahomes and they have Kelsey and all that. Yeah, but it's like at times they've been kind of streaky on offense. They've had moments where their offense just isn't great. Um, and they've kind of had to rely on their defense winning them games, which isn't a problem. It's just, you know, it's just something that happens. The receivers start dropping the shit out of it. Um, so we have that going on in this game and we're up again. So I kind of am looking at this like, all right, so the Chiefs best receiving situation is probably Travis Kelsey and maybe the other tight end Noah Gray. So and then you have the the Baltimore Ravens, whose arguably best defensemen are Kyle Hamilton, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. Those guys are the guys that typically will cover tight ends, your safety and your linebackers. Um, and your run game situation with Pacheco, who's also been one of the more dangerous players on the Chiefs offense. So there's three of the guys that are kind of accounted for. The Chief, the Ravens have very good secondary plays, so they can take out these receivers who haven't been that great this year. Um, <clears throat> the only, the real X factor for the Chiefs is literally Patrick Mahomes because he can he can make a lot of things happen. Probably the best quarterback in the league right now. It's not, not much of a debate. <laughs> um, so. Again, you have to always account for that. He's always going to be playing at his at a very, very high level. This is a game he's very well used to. The experience factor is through the roof for the Chiefs on this. They probably have the coaching advantage, experience advantage. Um, it won't be as big a stage for the as it will be for the Ravens, who I think this is Lamar's first time here. Um, but again, the home field advantage is going to be something. Um, Baltimore is a crazy place. It's their first time, I think, hosting the AFC Championship game since they've come to Baltimore. Uh yeah, all these there's a ton going on here for the Ravens to win this game. Again, they've just I think they're they rank as a higher offense, they score more points a game, they let in less points a game. It's like all the things that you look for, it's like, oh shit. All right. So the Ravens just are very go oh, very, very good football team. Um and so are the Chiefs, but it's like the Ravens are just a bit ahead. And I think that's why that's gonna result in them winning this game ultimately, is it's like, all right, well, more than likely the Ravens take this one. Um but again, you know, it's the playoffs. Anything can happen. It's the conference championships. The Chiefs are the Chiefs, right? Chiefs be chiefing. But yeah, I'm going to go with the Ravens for the reasons I said, right? Like, um, 
Ultimately, I think that the Chiefs' best weapons can be completely taken out of the game in Pacheco, Noah Gray, Travis Kelsey, um, and uh, Rashi Rice. Um, I think that the fact that the Chiefs have a question at O-line is going to be a big problem. The Ravens are coming in quite healthy. Uh, I think Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, and... Uh, Kyle Hamilton are going to be the reasons the Chiefs are struggling on offense and can't win this game. Ultimately, very good season, though, for a team that really didn't have the greatest offensive output this year. Uh, good job. And here's uh, my probable shock pick, right? Here's my upset pick, right? I've picked the one upset and gotten it right every round of the playoffs, but here's my big one. I feel good about this. I'm also kind of homering this pick a little bit because I'm a lion. I, I like like. I'm a Patriots fan, but I like live in Michigan. My second favorite team's always been the Lions. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, AFC NFC team. It's you know <laughs> you gotta you gotta root for them. I, I feel, I'd feel like a I feel like a fucking traitor. <laughs> Uh, at 6:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Lions will take on the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. 49ers are favored by six and a half with an over/under of 50 and a half. What a crazy line! Um, they're up. They're favored by a touchdown, so seven points. Um, Debo Samuel is 50-50 in this game. Just so we're all aware, I I don't really know if he's playing. I'm gonna guess he leans toward playing. But even if he does, um, with the way Debo plays football, it's a very he kind of. It, this isn't an insult at all. He plays kind of like a running back as a receiver. He's very like aggressive, head down, shoulder down, hit you with the shoulder kind of runner. And the fact that he's dealing with the shoulder injury is kind of one of the things where you're like, all right, a lot of his play style and power comes from like with his shoulders and shit. So I'm just wondering how like how limited he may be with the shoulder injury um, and how much like himself he'll be uh, in that game. So. All right, just that quick thing out of the way. That's a part of the reason why I think the Lions could steal this game because of the health of Debo Samuel. If he doesn't play, I really am leaning hard on the Lions in this one. Um, obviously, both teams are coming off a, a win, and that's how they're here. The bucket, the 49ers uh, beat the Packers is kind of like their nemesis. Um, they didn't play. You know, Purdy didn't play that great. They were ugly. They The Packers dropped a bunch of picks. Um, their defense played very well for the 49ers. They kind of did their thing, held the, held the uh, 49ers in the game. It was um, it was what twenty one seventeen till very late in that game for a look down to like I think it was like a minute ten left and it was still twenty one seventeen Packers and then um, the 49ers got the ball what about like three four five minutes left in the game maybe four minutes and then Purdy just kind of marched him right down he played bad and then he had that drive where it's like. Yeah, you can criticize the way he played and kind of critique it, but it's also like, well, when it mattered the most, he did kind of step up and have himself a drive, put the team in position to score, handed it off to McCaffrey, and they got the they ran it in for like five yards and got the touchdown, took the lead, and then their defense um, came out there and did what it does all year, won the game for the 49ers, kind of. They seen um, Love rolled out to his right and uh, just... Threw it across his body to the middle of the field, and a, a 49ers player just scooped it right up and intercepted it. Uh, so, kind of a poetic thing. That's an easy way to transition. But again, if you're a Packers fan, what a great season. 49ers, it was kind of an ugly win, but again, you got to break the rust off. Um, hey, you know, you won the game. That's all that really matters. Um, for the Lions and the Buccaneers, very close game, like the Packers and the uh 49ers um Lions led basically the entire thing it tie up a few times it was kind of back and forth the Lions would score like the Lions hit a field goal Bucks hit a field goal Lions scored a touchdown Bucks scored a touchdown Lions scored a touchdown Bucks scored a touchdown it was like that the entire game basically and then it was 17 17 the Lions scored got to stop scored again <laughs> it was kind of like the Lions finally found some momentum um and then the Buccaneers got the ball back scored went for two for some reason missed it Lions go for it. Uh, Lions obviously get the ball back, and they fail to get a, anything. So the bu the Bucks get the ball back uh, with you know uh, I don't know, not, not too much time, a little under two minutes, like a minute uh, thirty or something. And Baker Mayfield throws a pick on like the first or second play. Lions get the ball, they kneel it out, and you know it, the Bucks could have called like a timeout because the Lions kneeled a little too early. But ultimately, it wouldn't really matter. The Lions probably hit a field goal, and it would have been thirty-one twenty-four or uh, uh, thirty-four twenty-three. So you know what I mean? It's uh, the, the Bucks did the right thing and just kind of kneeled it and just let it go. So you know, pretty good game. Uh, both teams coming off good games. So. 
when I look at this game, and it may be kind of like, oh, they can't, the Lions can't beat the Niners. They're not good. Like, it's like, yeah, the 49ers are going to be heavy favorites. They're at home. They're very good defensively. But, like, there's there's things about the Niners that are, you can see the Lions winning this game. Um, and this is how I see it playing out. Um, we've seen the Packers kind of do this, too. One of the ways you can stop the Niners is you have to kind of do your best to contain Christian McCaffrey. Easier said than done. But if there's any defense left in the NFC that can actually contain Christian McCaffrey, it's the Lions. They have like a top five, maybe even top three rush defense. Um, certainly one of the best. I think it's like them. It's like Baltimore, them, and Kansas City, or maybe Kansas City slightly better. Uh, but again, the Lions are a top five rush defense, so they're very much going to be able to stop uh or at least slow down Christian McCaffrey, which could put a hamper on the play action pass and and kind of like the motion game and kind of this um, RPO style offense that Kyle Shanahan runs that kind of depends on the run kind of building up the pass because they do a lot of play action. They do a lot of like, you know, shifty stuff, a lot of like, again, their offense is built off the run. We all know this. We all know the Shanahan offense. Um, it's been around since Denver in like the 80s, you know. Um so again, a lot of play action. If that if we can shut the run down, that's not as effective. It kind of sl starts to slow down the receiving situation. It kind of puts like the hamper into the Shanahan offense. They're doing random things. Um, and again, if Debo isn't playing, like we kind of we're not sure. And if he's not playing at a hundred percent, how effective is that going to be? We know that the 49ers offense can kind of struggle without Debo, or if Debo's not really making big plays, they struggle. Um, so again, those those are it's a real way the Lions can shut down the 49ers offense. Like it's not like it's impossible. They can't do it. It's like well, they've, they're again. I think they've if they've. I think maybe one of the Buccaneers guys got over seventy. But again, they've they're like still no hundred yard rusher against them. Still no eighty yard rushers against them. Maybe there's a combo of that. But again, they they're very good against running backs. Um, and if you do that, take away or at least limit Christian McCaffrey, that kind of stops the 49ers offense. And then again, they do have that very good defensive front, very good front seven. Um, but their secondary, if you can throw the ball really, really well, you can kind of mess with the 49ers. Their secondary is their kind of a weak spot, especially if you're throwing like outside the numbers and stuff like that, um, which... They have St. Brown, they have Jameson Williams, they have Sam Laporta. That can actually kind of get to the 49ers defense a little bit and kind of mess them up. The games that they do lose, it seems like teams can throw the ball rather well. So I don't know. I, I feel like, um, like again, they can win this game. They have to take advantage of the fact that this is not the greatest secondary. Um, still good, just not the greatest. It's their weak spot. They have to block extremely well. If any team can block the 49ers pass rush, it's going to be the Lions with that front seven that they have. So again, you kind of, it's kind of like, whoa, there is a weird shot again with the Lions run game. You kind of have to, the 49ers gave up like nine carries for like 110 yards or something like that outside the tackles or something um, against the Packers. So again, if, if any team can run the ball, it's going to be a team like the Lions that had Jameer Gibbs go for 950 almost and 10 touchdowns and uh, Montgomery went for... 1,012 and 13 touchdowns. So the Lions can run the shit out of it. So again, if there's any spot where the 49ers are going to get ran on, Lions will execute that and run to those spots. They're going to throw to the spots where they struggle. I could see the Lions stealing this game. Um, could the 49ers win? Oh, fuck yeah, they probably are. <laughs> you know, they're a better team, but hey, it's the playoffs. Any kind of crazy shit can happen. Fucking Kyle Shanahan could be ahead 24-0 and choke the game away like he's done in the past with multiple other games um, with, that are under his call. Um, but again, I do see the Lions having a path to victory. It's very specific. It's very, very like they have to execute perfectly. But hey, they've been doing it the last two weeks, right? I don't know. And I think they've gone up against better receiving cores than what the 49ers got, especially if Debo isn't able to go. Yeah, they got Kittle. Ayuk isn't too much for us to stop. I know Jennings is okay, but it's just like... I'm pretty sure Evans and Godwin and Palmer and fucking Cooper Cup and Nakua are way better receiving cores. No, again, no disrespect to the Niners. Debo Samuel's better, but it's like, you know what I mean? Lions just went up against two very good receiving cores and did okay. 49ers don't have anything those guys don't have, so I don't know. Um, I like the Lions to steal this game. I really do. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a good game. Both these games are going to be really fun to watch. Very close games. Uh, I see them as single score games. And again, these are just how I see it, right? So I guess my Super Bowl, um, after all year predicting the Ravens versus 49ers, now the Ravens versus the Lions. Hey, wh who would have thought, huh? All right.
I know that's a bit of a shorter video, but hey, I, I, I snuck in 20 minutes of picks. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, listening. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. It was fun making it. It's been a fun year. We've got one video left in the Super Bowl. So, uh, yeah, that's about that. Um, as always, it's another video down the drain, down the dumps, in the tubes, whatever the fuck I say. <laughs> uh thank you so much again thank you so much for listening guys i hope you have a good rest of your uh, day night morning mid afternoon mid evening uh tithe whatever um bar mitzvah uh communion whatever you do whatever time it is for you <laughs> i hope you just have a good one and, and as always it's go lions uh yeah go lions go tigers and of course it's always go patriots i'll see you around you guys have a good uh, time and, oh yeah make sure you leave a like subscribe leave your comments pics blah 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 youtube blah 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 bl